It is Memorial Day 2023, and uh, I am Mr. Gen X, but more appropriately today, Heartbreak Ridge, as my wife likes to call me now. Heartbreak Ridge. Heartbreak Ridge. Today, and being that it is Memorial Day, one of the first things that I want to talk about is the difference between Memorial Day and Veterans Day. Veterans Day is for all of us men and women who have served in the United States military. Memorial Day is quite different. A bit more somber. Should be anyway. Memorial Day is for those of our brothers and sisters in the military who did not come home. It's a good thing I have the sunglasses on. Not just because it's a beautiful sunny day here in Mesa, Arizona. But this is a tough subject. We have to remember that not all of our brothers and sisters come back. Even those who come back physically, not all of them ever really come back. And Mio Zio is a prime example of that. Didn't know it as a kid, but he was the last one. He was in Korea. He was the only survivor of his company. And uh, there was a big parade for him. He got all sorts of awards. He was physically home in Brooklyn, never really came home. So we'll also keep that in mind on Memorial Day. Not all of our brothers and sisters have come home. So as far as Gen X, I know for myself, I knew as a kid vaguely, because we didn't, you weren't supposed to talk about it, but we know historically, of course, when we were kids in the 70s, the veterans were from Vietnam, most of them. Of course, the older folk they were from the uh, from Korea, like my my Zio, and uh, also from World War II. A lot from World War II, of course. So we don't really see. So when did our generation? When did Gen Gen X? When did Generation X start becoming casualties in military conflicts? Well, this is where it gets personal, and why I want to do this video and keep the focus on someone I actually grew up with. So a little context, I grew up in a little town named Selden. Selden is on Long Island, which of course is why I have this outrageous accent. Why do you think I have this outrageous accent? You Although we would argue <laughs> for years, we're not the ones with the accent, you guys are. And I grew up and went to school at Bicycle Path, and then I went to high school in, I think Newfield was actually in Center Reach, technically. So it happened, it was a kid, a little bit older than me, and he went into the Navy. And on May 17th, 1987, while on, uh, on a Navy ship in the Gulf, the USS Stark was hit by an Iraqi fighter jet. And as a result, of that attack, May 17th, 1987. I was still in the military at the time. I was in the army though. And as a result of that attack, 37 members of the Navy were killed. Two were lost at sea. One of them was Terry Donald Weldon, who I grew up with. And it's quite something to hear about people dying in combat. And it's always terrible. This was particularly bad because as a young Gen Xer, this was the first time someone I knew, he was barely 20 years old in 1987. And he had been married before he was deployed. He married a high school sweetheart. It was a terrible, terrible thing. But Terry and I had grown up, and it's quite something when, at least the first time, when somebody so young, who's just been married, that you've known your whole life. Now, I'm not saying Terry and I were best friends. I'm not saying that. We weren't even close friends. But Terry, of course, was a kid from the neighborhood. 
We knew all the same people. We had classes together, especially high school, in Newfield. Uh, it was quite shocking. I don't even know how to put words to that. And I hope that you've never been through that, but hey, again, right after the USS Stark was hit, a few years later was the first Iraq war, and then a whole bunch of Gen X died uh, in Afghanistan and Iraq. But this particular one I'm talking about today, Terry Weldon, it's, it was, it's something that you don't think you ever get over. Um, obviously, it would have been worse, of course, if Terry and I were really good friends, but the idea that somebody that you grew up with, that you've known your whole life, so I, and I, when that happened in 87, I was 18. I was still in the military. This was a very, very real thing that could have ended my life, too. I mean, that's what you're, you, you go through that. Holy crap, Terry's dead. They never found his body. I can't even begin to understand or contemplate or comprehend the grief something like that caused his wife and his family. Just what it did to me, that a kid I grew up with needlessly died. So today, for Memorial Day, what I want to do is, and I'll put the plaques in the video. I just wanted to take a few minutes on Memorial Day to remember the kid. I just want to take a few minutes to remember the kid that I grew up with, Terry Weldon. That none of our brother, brothers and sisters lost in combat should ever be forgotten. This one in particular, not a big well-known name, and I am ashamed to say, I don't know the name of the other individual he was with that also his body was never recovered, but I will have all 37 names in the video so that they are never forgotten. So that's what Memorial Day is. It's remembering our brothers and sisters in the military that didn't make it back. Also keep in mind those that are physically back but never made it back. So this Memorial Day 2023, this one's for you, Terry.